We're just weeks away from the start of the new NHL season, a perfect time to begin evaluating what you can expect from your given club. To do it, well, let's bring in Craig Bunn from Calgary, Brian Hayes here in the studio. Gentlemen, here's the game we're going to play today. I'll name a team or a player. You name the ceiling or the floor, and which result is more likely. Brian, let's start with the Toronto Maple Leafs. The Stanley Cup, something that they've been chasing since 1967, would be the ceiling. The floor? A first-round playoff exit, which is more likely? You're way too happy referencing 1967. <laughs> no, I'm Gino, just please saying. Please stop that. You don't need to go down that road. They've been living with the same parameters for about five years here in Toronto. The floor being a first-round exit, the ceiling being a Stanley Cup championship, and they've been living on the floor for those five years. They jumped off the floor once last spring. It lasted five games, then they returned to the floor. I think they've adjusted the outer parts of this roster, but the core is still here, the top four defense is still intact, the starting goaling is still here, and the head coach is still here. As far as I'm concerned, I believe it's still the floor when it comes to the Maple Leafs. Well, Brian, you and I are in full agreement. I think the only way they can get to the ceiling is if they get to space where there's no gravity pulling them down. I think their roster pulls them down. I don't like their blue line. I don't like how they're built deeper into their forward group. I have zero problems with Austin Matthews, William Nylander, John Tavares, Mitch Marner. I don't have any problems with those guys. Their problem is deeper into their lineup in the blue line. And until that changes, which is a big reason Brad Tree leaving is here, I don't think there's any reason to think they can hit that ceiling. I think they're a lot closer to the floor. Wow, not a lot of optimism there. All right, let's, next up, let's go to an individual, Jonathan Huberdeau. The ceiling, 115 points. His total from two years ago. The floor, a repeat of last year's 55-point campaign. Craig, ceiling or floor? Ceiling all the way. When you look at every season before last year for Jonathan Huberdeau, he's been an elite left winger in the National Hockey League, and I think he'll find that level once again. Last year is an aberration. Bob Ganey said this when I was working with him with the Dallas Stars. He said, just because you had one bad season doesn't mean you have to have two bad seasons. I think the changes, specifically behind the bench, will help Jonathan Huberto come closer to that ceiling that he established for a long time. I'm on the floor on this, Craig. I, I think the aberration was 115 points a couple of years ago. He's a very good player, a very good player, but I don't see him coming close to 100-plus again. I don't think he's going to be 55 necessarily, but in the nature of the game we're playing here, if you split hairs, that's a 60-point differential. I don't think he's hitting anywhere close to 85 points. I think he hangs around 70 to 75. He's 30 years old now. I think he had a mope on last year. Hopefully that's gone. I think they're banking on it being gone now that Daryl Sutter's not around. But I don't see him reaching anywhere close to 115 points again. Hayes, not a believer. What about Boston? The Bruins ran away with the President's Trophy last year before getting bounced in the opening round. Hayes, we're going to start with you on this one. The ceiling is another first-place finish in the division. The floor is missing the playoffs entirely. Ceiling? Or floor. I'm on the floor on this as well. I don't think you can go about your business losing Patrice Bergeron, David Krejci. You see how Linus Olmark played towards the end of the season and into the playoffs last year and expect anything close to what they put together last year. Everything broke their way. Naturally, the Bruins were going to come back down to earth this year. But I think on top of that, you've got Ottawa, who's improved. Buffalo's who's improved. The Leafs are a very good regular season team. Tampa knows what they're doing. Florida knows what they're doing. I think it's much more likely Boston battling for a playoff spot than it is they actually win the division. I, again, I'm in full agreement here. I mean, we saw what they did in a record-setting regular season. And now you don't have Patrice Bergeron. You don't have David Krejci. Number one, number two centers that really drive significant play. And now you're asking other players to step into that. You can put players in those positions. It doesn't mean that they're capable, and I don't think they are. You also lose Taylor Hall. You added Tyler Bertuzzi down the stretch to try to help your team. You added Dmitry Orlov. And this team really, really flamed out come playoff time. I think they're in a real nip-and-tuck battle to make the playoffs. And so I think they're much closer to the floor than to that magnificent ceiling they reached last season. All right, guys, I want to close now on Connor Bedard. He had 143 points in 57 games for Regina last year. But this is the NHL. Craig, the ceiling is a point per game. The floor is 50 points in total. Do you expect it to be closer to the ceiling or the floor? We're going to play a little game of deduction here now, Gino and Brian. So here's what I project Connor Bedard to do this year. Around 30 goals and 70 points. 
So I think you can now answer, is that the ceiling or is that the floor? <laughs> keep this in mind. He went to a really poor Regina Pats team as a 15-year-old. And all he did at 15, 16, and 17 was dominate. He didn't have a lot of talent around him. So where I've seen Connor Bedard, I see similar results happening in the NHL. Okay, I'm not a numbers guy, Craig, although I did drop some numbers with the uh, the Bruins landscape you last did, year. Yeah. It was close, though. Gino, I, I had yeah. to second guess it. I'm like, am I getting this math right? I'm going to go closer to the floor, and it's not that I don't love Connor Bedard. It's that he's 18, and that team is terrible. I think Chicago is going to legitimately be one of the worst teams in the league. I think they're going to trade off pieces come the deadline. I could see him scoring upwards of 30 goals. I don't know who else is scoring there. I know Taylor Hall is a very good player. I don't know if he's got top-line capabilities anymore. So I think it's going to be a tough transition. 18 years old. He's not a big guy. I think he scores. I think he might get better as the season goes on. But I'm leaning closer to 50 than 80. I know that's blasphemy around here because everyone loves Connor Bedard and I love Connor Bedard. No, clearly you're 18. a Bedard hater. I think. Hayes. Well, no. maybe I'll be labeled no. that. I'll be the contrarian if I have to. I think it's going to be tougher <laughs> than many people expect. That Chicago team is terrible. All right, it's going to be fun to look back at all your predictions when all is said and done at the end of the season. 7-Eleven That's Hockey is brought to you by 7-Eleven. Get meals, groceries, essentials, and of course, Slurpee delivered.